Just, do you guys have any other advice that you'd like to tell everybody? I think my best advice would be to help others learn. I always learn really well when I'm teaching other people. So even if it's the basics, uh, my friend Joe is going through the boot camp right now and he's texting me just about every night. So I'm trying to help him go work through his problems and it's helping me understand them better too. So that's a really great way to help learn yourself learn is to teach others, even if it's stuff that you're not 100% sure of working through the problem with them will help you understand it. Revisiting problems that you looked at before when you didn't quite understand them because you were learning them too. And that's the case on the job too. I've found a lot of, like when we have new developers coming in, I'm always kind of glossing over stuff when I'm learning it the first time because I'm in a rush sometimes. So going over it with another developer who you're trying to teach it to, you say, oh, now I see how this connects to this and this makes so much more sense now. Teaching other people was, has been a great aspect of how I've been learning too. And that's helping students do the pre-work and fire hose. I've learned weird stuff from students all the time. Somebody sent in a really weird, I think it was a uh, food bar class. I thought there's no way this thing is going to work and it worked flawlessly. And I did not know why. So I had to get around with it and figure it out. I think just teaching is... So it's such a great way to learn because you're also helping somebody else learn and you're figuring out new stuff yourself too. Another big thing about starting your first job is accept that you are not going to be an expert. Everybody is going to have to help you a lot and that's fine. It's the case not only with you, but also with senior level developers. I have a senior level developer clinging to me consistently and it's great because I get to help them learn stuff and it's helping me learn stuff too. And it's showing that, you know, you have value as a junior level developer. You, you're good enough to help senior level developers understand your own application, understand you know how everything talks together. And it's funny to have them ask you questions when the, this guy has been working with Rails for about seven years now, and I'm explaining to him how stuff works there. You're gonna have a lot of questions as well when you first start out, so you'll be clinging to someone too. Find projects to collaborate on. Um, you know, as much collaboration as you can. There's some great open source stuff going on at Firehose that uh, wasn't there when I was there. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to spending some time uh, trying to get in there. The more you can collaborate and just practice working on projects, the more you're going to be able to talk about what you've worked on and the more confidence you're going to have. Uh, you're going to be faster coming up to speed on a new code base. Um, you know, getting in there and getting stuff that isn't a tutorial, stuff that isn't sort of canned, you're going to break things a lot. You, know? you break them, then you fix them. Um, and that's where you're going to learn a lot. I'm going to echo both both sentiments from Ben and, and from Aaron, just helping others and talking code with them and just kind of seeing the process that they're going through that really kind of helps uh, settle things in your own mind, uh, mind and, and being uh, exposed to the way different people, even newer people. Like I, I see code from newer people all the time that I just hadn't solved it that way because they learned it from their mentor that way. Whoever's helping them through it. Now I'm getting exposed to the way someone else learned something versus the way we learned it. And it's good. It's good to see the different alternatives on how to solve the same thing. And, and that gives you scenarios like, oh, in this type of scenario, then that would be a better choice than what I was doing. I'm also very big on just kind of um, staying active in the community, even if you can't participate, but just look for the resources. I try to listen to like the podcasts out there on Ruby, the podcasts out there on coding in general, because people are always talking about different topics and some of it might interest you. Like just today, I was listening to the I think the Ruby 5 podcast, the little five-minute snippets. And on there, someone talked about integrating, there's a gem, I guess, that integrates Sidekick to Slack. So you can see your Sidekick queue on Slack. Oh. And it happens that I use Sidekick and we're queuing up some massive campaigns that I'm now having to track all the time. That'd be awesome for me to you just be able to throw that in Slack now and, and do it that way. But it's by staying open to listening to other ideas that, that you kind of get that. The other thing that's I've been applying to myself a little bit more recently is to not stop learning. It's easy to stop learning once you start getting comfortable in your code base or once you start getting busy with what you're doing. I started like really working a lot on JavaScript. Not because work demands it. It has nothing to do with work whatsoever. I'm not doing any kind of work-related projects on JavaScript. It was just like, hey, you know, I started learning Ruby about a year ago, almost a year ago. Uh, it's time to learn something else. So I, I feel the misery again of like learning something you don't understand. But just putting yourself through that, and even though the syntax sometimes is a little bit tricky, I don't particularly like JavaScript, but I'm realizing that I'm going through a lot of these things, the tutorials on JavaScript, a lot quicker than when I was trying to learn Ruby, just because the concepts I already understand. Solving some of these problems in JavaScript, I already understand. But whatever you want to learn, you know, I saw Ken has a tutorial on building Spurdy on Elixir, I think. So, you know, anything that you really want to learn, but just continue learning and that's just going to keep you sharp. I remember when I was barely starting to look for places, this is before that, I asked someone who was hiring, like, you know, what, what do you kind of look for? And it's 
And one thing that I said, it's not someone that knows how to do everything, but knows where to look for the right tool for that job. So as you start getting more experience, you start re realizing, okay, when would Ruby be the right thing? When would JavaScript be the right thing? When would, you know, whatever else you're using be the right thing? And that comes along with kind of staying exposed to what's out there.